What's shaking you guys? This is D22 Responses with you today and from the people of Cyberlink they have given me this trial or not trial full edition of Power Director 11 to try out and from me to Cyberlink I wanted to thank you for this opportunity and I will make sure to represent your company very well. Now reason I say this is because I made a tutorial from the other Cyberlink Power Director software and it got really popular and a person from Cyberlink contacted me and basically wanted me to do tutorials on Cyberlink Power Director 11 and I will gladly do that. Now this basically adds more software to my repertoire of software that I have so it's great and I basically got this for free. Anyways we are going to be going through Cyberlink PowerDirector 11 and then in future videos I'm going to do some tutorials on how to use PowerDirector 11 to your full advantage. So what we're going to do is we are going to look at the options we have here. So this is similar to the other software that I use. It has your full feature editor, easy editor, and slideshow creator. And it has explore more digital media software and you can also have the option to always enter the full feature editor at setup. So you can click this box and it enters this mode right away. So what we'll do is we'll go to the full feature and okay so we're gonna get started on using Cyberlink PowerDirector 11. So what it does is that it gives us the option to use high definition video. You want to enable shadow files and the speed up the editing process so we'll just go yes for that because you must activate this feature before using it. Connect to the internet. Let's activate. Why not? There we go. Since I have the free software anyway we can do that. So your interface here is pretty much the same. So we go to the effect room, picture in picture room, particle room, title room, transition room, audio mixing room, and voiceover recording room. So what we're going to do is we're just going to import a simple project. So we're going to click the folder up here, and we're going to go import media files. So what we'll do is we'll go to libraries, videos, and then we're just going to use my sample from the superhero color. We're going to activate that. So I've already activated the features here. So I can activate most of the codecs that I use here so that I'm able to use the software. So we're going to just drag and drop into the timeline here. Let me just slow down for a bit and I'll show you how to do that. So what we can do is it'll go detect scenes and then edit using content aware editing. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go edit using content aware editing and then it'll analyze the content. It'll take a while to analyze here depending on the size of the file. If you have like a seven minute vlog then it will definitely take some time and if it's in HD then put on some coffee and a pot of popcorn and you'll be waiting for a while. So depending on the speed of your computer as well it basically analyzes the footage and gives you an opportunity to edit it however you want. Now, I'm going to try as best as I can to explain most of the new features in the new PowerDirector 11. Now, most of you will think, oh, you sold out, you're doing this for the company, and I say, I take every opportunity that I can, so please don't judge me, and keep watching the video if you want to know more about this awesome software. So, basically what we're going to do here is we're just going to keep the content analyzed, and we are going to see what this new feature does in the power director software. Okay, so after we analyze the content what it will do here is that it'll give us a menu and all the options here of the content. So what we're going to do is we're going to play this back yes so that's just basically me saying what I'm saying so here you can go to add to select it and you can automatically fix the video so it will automatically fix the video for you so we'll go to add to selected list add to selected list add to selected list yes and as you can see there will be wrenches here to show that there have been fixes so we'll go add to selected list add to selected list so what we'll do now is we're going to go back and then we're going to click OK. So then what will happen is that it will go import and edit and cut and crop automatically on the timeline here. 
And they have a zoom in and zoom out feature now with the timeline, which is really cool. I've always wanted that so that it makes fine cuts easy. So you can go clip a certain part here and trim it here. We're going to zoom out here and stretch the timeline. As you can see, there's a clock and two arrows that point left and right. So let's say you're going to click on a scene. This little hand shows up and then you go adjust the volume and you can pan the volume however you want which is really cool so you can go louder here and you can go down and you can go up and then that's the that's the unique way of editing the volume here he's got these points here these certain points you can adjust the volume one end here one end here one end here one end here let's just say we're gonna cut this out now we're going to go to our little tab here. This is to select everything. So let's just see what we did with our clips here. So we're going to play that back. So what you just heard was just simple audio editing. They made this easier in PowerDirector 11 where you can go and select points and then you can go quieter or louder and vice versa. You can adjust it from start to finish, which is really cool. So let's say if you wanted to bleep out a certain scene, you could do it like that. And then if you wanted to go loud in one scene, you could do that, which is really cool. So in this sense, they have made several improvements in the editing system. Let's just say we highlight this area and then we can go cut. And then we can cut and leave a gap. So what I did was I selected these two points, I right clicked, and then I went to cut and leave a gap. So it left us a gap of space so that we can do more intricate editing. What I just did there was I pulled and dragged one scene and then it gave me the option to overwrite. So we're not going to do that, we're just going to cancel out of that. So what you do here is you click and hold the left mouse button and then you can drag your scene. So this makes it a lot easier to do really well published editing. Now this is one thing that I've always liked about uh, editing software where you can do exact cuts and you can zoom in on the timeline appropriately. That's one thing that they improved on and I appreciate Cyberlink allowing me to use this software. So what we're going to do here is we're going to scroll back here. We're just going to delete this. We're going to remove and leave gap. The good thing about this is that it leaves a gap of space every time. And you can also do the same for your picture. So let me just slow down a bit. What you can also do here is that you can adjust the opacity of your picture. So you can go down for zero where you can just hear the sound. And then you can go up 100% so that you can see the complete picture. So what we'll do here is we're going to take our timeline back to the beginning and then that's basically our clip. The clip and you can switch over to movie where it shows the full movie. But we're going to go back to clip. And you can also go seek by frame, second, minute, scene, chapter, segment you can make certain segments in your videos so that's what makes it really cool and then what you do is let's just do some simple editing we are gonna go to fix and enhance so what we'll do is we're gonna fix and enhance the video so we're gonna apply stabilizer let's just see if we can stabilize the motion here and then you can go video denoise you can set the degree of the denoiser and then the audio denoiser, it'll analyze and apply it. And it will get rid of clicking noise, and then we can apply it to all. And then it'll go here and it'll apply all the changes. So we just did our changes, and then let's just take a look at what happened. So it stabilized the picture 
and it also got rid of some noises. So you can also go to video enhancement and then it improves the quality. You can adjust the degree of enhancement here. That's really amazing. We're going to apply to all there. The new power director has really outdone themselves this time and it has really made things easy. And you can import certain file types as well as long as you make sure that you activate the features here and that you have the software. So that's one of the good things about it. So you can go capture to go back to your menu here and you can capture the recording here. Like it can go and also detect certain other recording devices. Like let's say if you have a built in webcam. Now, my other webcam is overshadowing this one here. So let me just get this out of the way. Now, I'm talking to you from the built in webcam from the computer. And I'm also recording this using the Logitech C615 web camera. So notice here the quality of the computer built-in webcam is not so good, but it's picking up my motion really well. And then what you can do is you can do a direct recording of the camera. And then you can also switch between the other devices that you have so that you can do multi-level recording. You can also go capture from a microphone and you can also capture from an external or optical device. So this is one of the new capture features you can do. So you can go record down there and then record your video and then you can capture the content and it directly takes it to the edit menu. So it's really fascinating on what this that the software can do. Now originally I haven't had a chance to play around with this because uh, Cyberlink was just the first ever software that I used. I was one of the fortunate people to use Cyberlink Power Director when I was starting out my YouTube career. This is just a little side note. The first software that I used was Cyberlink Power Director before I started using Sony Vegas, After Effects, and now that I have another updated version of Power Director, I'm going to make sure that I use this well, and I will give you other tutorials on how to do it. So now I really didn't explain a lot more so we're gonna keep going so what we'll do here is we're gonna to go to the effect room and we're gonna see what it's like we can go download new blue effects which is really cool so we can get that we can get the power plugins through the site so we're not gonna do that right now but I will later on that'll be in a future video so anyways there's also the new blue oh yeah the new blue stuff I installed here now the new blue stuff is additional plugins, but they also integrate themselves within PowerDirector as well. So that's really cool. They integrate all of the other stuff. And then in the Cyberlink default, there's like the particle effects where there's like lightning, there's special effects like continuous shooting here, and there's a grid, pen ink, pop art wall. Oh, that's pretty neat. So let's just say we apply the pop art wall to our clip. Let's see what it looks like here. Wow, check that out. Let's play that back. That's really neat. Now, as you can see, I'm pretty much enjoying what I'm seeing here and I'm just playing around with things. So this is really interesting on how Cyberlink has really improved themselves here. Now this effect I believe is called the bloom so we're gonna set the bloom over here. Now we've set the pop art to the bloom but let's just say you don't want all of those plugins 3D, video in reverse, video crop, video speed, video rotation. So those are just the standard effects that you can apply. And if you don't like the effects that you put in here let's say you don't like this effect you can just go edit, undo, edit, undo. You can just press control Z, control Z to undo all the effects you put in. So you don't have to worry about that anymore. So let's just go to the particle room. This is something new. I've never been to the particle room here, but generally you can put particles in. This this is the uh, Cyberlink particles. So what we're going to do is we're going to try setting effect A onto here. We're going to override it. Now this is a 3D effect and we're going to drag it down so that it's in another layer. So what we'll do here is we're going to play it back and then there are the particles. Now something just happened there. It overwrote the whole sequence. So we're going to stretch it and then it's going to allow us to play back and everything 
here. So what we'll do, and that's me lying in bed. No need to see that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to play it back, and then you'll see that the particles are playing back with the clip here. Now, I apologize for the lag here. It's a little slow because I'm doing a lot of things at once here. So you would see the particles playing around on the uh, on the screen there. So there you go. I enabled the stabilizer and everything. So that's what happened. And that's what allowed the particles to go through. So you can just delete the particles by simply clicking on it and then deleting it. So you can apply the standard effects to any of your clips that you want. The zoom in, the zoom out, water flow. Now I won't have time to go through all the effects, but this is just the new, fresh, clean look that Cyberlink has. And then you can apply your transitions. Now the transitions here, these are the same transitions that comes with every Cyberlink software. So we're going to apply the transition over here. It's just simply dragging and dropping. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back and then we're going to play it. Look at that transition. Beautiful transition. So after we've done that, it will save all your changes and that's that. Sorry about the slowness of the computer. I'm basically doing a lot more things on here than most. Like I'm multitasking a lot. Now these transitions here can be 3D or it can just go whatever, however you want. So we're going to delete the transition by clicking on the transition then deleting it. So we're going to go glare. We're going to apply the glare on our picture. So when we go through the timeline, the glare will pop up and then my clip will appear. So what we'll do here is we're just going to play this back. And if you find that it's slow, to perform on your computer what you can do is you would go preview quality and then you would go low preview resolution so that it plays back faster on your computer because normally for high performance computers you would set it to full but for low performance computers you can set it to low I think I said that already for high performance computers you can set it to high but for low performance computers you can set it to low so then what we'll do here is that after we've set the preview quality we can go ahead and then preview what we've just done here and then we'll render everything so after we have applied all of our effects here we can render it so what we'll do is we'll go to file export actually no file produce movie so that is basically when you're done with everything you just simply press alt then f11 and then what it'll do is it'll take you straight to the produce section and then you can select the file format of your choosing WMV being the basic codec MKV being a Matroska video file format MOV being QuickTime MPEG4 H.264 ABC this is the new codec they applied and MPEG2 now these are different compression types and AVI which is standard so you can also go with uh, fast rendering technology where it uses true velocity. So what we can do is we're going to go to the H.264 codec and then you can also make it into 3D. And then you can also select the file format. Write a video production back to DV tape, Sony, Apple devices, Microsoft devices, Blackberry phones. It, it's compatible for certain Blackberries. So and you can also set it for certain phones like the Samsung phones and everything like that and you can go HDV and you can set it online you can also upload it to Facebook put it on YouTube Daily Motion Vimeo or Nikoniko Doga something like that Nico Nico Duga something like that I've never heard of that site before anyways we are gonna let's say upload it to Vimeo so you can go full HD quality type and you can type in my video and then produce a cyberlink power director 11 you can directly upload it to the site that you want sorry I was picking my nose there I know it's disgusting looking but you can just set your video qualities the title the description the tags it updates itself on the site that you choose here and then you can go start to start the production of the rendering and then it starts the upload so it is a fully integrated device
it's a fully integrated software that allows you to upload when you're done everything so it's really cool so I just explained a few of the new features in the PowerDirector software the transitions the mixing room where you can mix your audio you can do a voiceover recording like this hello there my name is Big Dink and all that sort of thing you can probably just do something like that and then you can put in like a little voiceover and everything I'm gonna have some fun with this as we go along but this is just a general introduction to the new CyberLink PowerDirector software and I will be doing more tutorials on this on my D22 responses channel so you can click the annotation to subscribe to that channel if you want to see more tutorials on how to use CyberLink PowerDirector and if you happen to not have CyberLink PowerDirector, you can feel free to ask me any other questions about editing, and I'll try to respond to them as much as I can, and I will give you the best answer as possible. So everyone, thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate you watching, and also thank you to CyberLink for this opportunity to allow me to use the software. And I know I've had certain opinions about CyberLink before, but since CyberLink has given me an opportunity to use the software, I will make sure to give the best to the company. So thank you very much, CyberLink. You guys rock, get fueled for life, and I'll respond to you another time.